Over time, the iPad has worked its way into my everyday workflow to the point now where I think I might actually be a little bit lost without it. So today I wanted to share with you the ways I've been using it to stay productive and to give you some advice on how to use your iPad to the maximum as well. And remember, if you do like iPad and aesthetic tech content, be sure to subscribe. I've got loads of that here on the channel, so go and check it out. Anyway, let's just get right into it. Okay, let's start with one of the newest things that's come out for iPad. And honestly, you've got to check this out because it's fundamentally changed how I work on my iPad and my Mac on a day-to-day -day basis. It's universal control. On a basic level, universal control lets you control your iPad or another Mac with the same keyboard and mouse you're using for your main device. So there's no barrier between the two. You simply drag your pointer over to the iPad or other Mac and start using it as you would normally. It's a totally seamless experience when it works well, which has worked its way into my overall desk setup. For my workflow, I've been absolutely loving it for social media posting on Instagram and TikTok. I always find that if I switch to my phone to do that, I'll often get lost in there because I always have loads of notifications or messages to reply to, and sometimes I can even forget what I picked up my phone for, but not so with the iPad. For Instagram, for example, I can just drag photos or videos over from my Mac and then head straight into the app and upload them or edit them within the Reels app, or open up TikTok and edit them in there. I've been using it for all sorts of other things too, like a webcam, sidecar when I need it, and of course just having it to quickly access iPad apps immediately from my Mac has just been so useful. I hate to use the term game changer unless I really think something does, but universal control with the iPad on this stand next to my Mac has, well, changed the game for me. I really, really love how this works and it's been a huge boost to my productivity. Next up is one that's really helped speed up my iPad use, and it's something that I recommend you all at least try getting used to. It's learning some simple iPad OS hacks, if you will, so you can get work done quickly and reduce the annoyance of some repetitive tasks. There's loads of these out there for iPad OS, but here's a couple of my favorites that have really sped up what I do. Firstly, there's a gesture for copy and pasting, which I use all the time. If you simply highlight what you want and then use three fingers to pinch inwards, this will copy whatever you've got highlighted highlighted and then you can move wherever you want to and then pinch outwards to paste whatever it is, which is super useful. Oh, and if you've got handoff enabled, this will also work seamlessly with your iPhone or Mac too, which is really awesome. Another favorite is the often overlooked text replacement feature. Setting this up can save you a bunch of time and I really recommend getting into it. For me, when I type a double at sign, it will write out my entire email address. And if I type out ADRSS, the iPad will type out my entire postage address, which when you're in the middle of emailing can be really useful. You can set this up in settings and it will sync across all of your iOS devices too. I've got a couple of videos on loads of these quick productivity tips, including one which focuses on the Apple Pencil. So so I'll link those in the description, but they're well worth getting to grips with and it will help you just get the most out of your iPad and most importantly, use it a lot faster. Following on from there is making use of the iPad shortcuts features, which are really easy to overlook completely, especially if you're not really into customizing your iPad or just don't like getting into the nitty gritty of the feature sets. Shortcuts are a way of the iPad completing a bunch of tasks that you would normally do yourself with a simple tap or trigger. For me, I've used the shortcuts to set up a variation of home screen options for my iPad, which I've then placed into this small widget. Each button takes me to a different working space on the iPad, which is tailored to what I'm going to need for that session. It also silences a bunch of notifications too, which is really useful. I've got a specific home screen for gaming and one for work, and I've also got this cheeky little shortcut that loads up the Lo-Fi Girl YouTube channel and then brings me directly back to my home screen so I can have some working music on while I get stuff done. I'll link that one in the description if you want to add it to your home screen too. Shortcuts can go much further on from this though. There's some amazing people out there doing some amazing things with them. So I encourage you to check them out and to tailor a few to your own needs. If you're unsure where to start, I like to think about tasks that are often repetitive or annoying and see if you can build a shortcut around it because there's very likely a solution to your problem. Before we move on to the final two tips, I wanted to take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, Ugreen and the Nexode 200W desktop charger. 
This is a desktop charger with 200 watts of power, which allows you to charge all your devices safely and efficiently using the latest GAN or GAN technology. There's six ports in total here, four USB-C and two USB-A, and thanks to the 200 watts of power, you can get up to three MacBooks, two phones, and a pair of wireless earbuds all charging at the same time. It's also fast charge enabled, so you can power up all of your devices rapidly, while the onboard intelligence ensures that the heat is dissipated correctly. This charger fits perfectly into a desk setup, or if you're working in an office space with a few people, it could happily sit in the middle of a table and power all the laptops and phones for the day's work. And considering what it's putting out, it's not that much bigger than the official MacBook charger, and it will save a bunch of space on an extension lead too. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description below and a huge thanks goes out to the folks over at Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Okay, moving on to my next tip now, and that's to check out the apps which are either made for the iPad or absolutely shine on the iPad. Because once you do find an app that works for your workflow, you can really start enjoying the iPad as a decent productivity tool. Some example apps that have worked out really well for me are Microsoft's To Do, which I start every single day with to create a simple to-do list to keep me on task. Procreate, which is simply the best drawing and art tool for the iPad. We use this a lot for my brand Kuroku to sketch out product ideas. And more often than not, this is where all the wallpapers we make often start off on. Lightroom, which is absolutely my favorite way to edit photos. I edit everything you see on my Instagram on my iPad and make use of my own preset pack to get my photos edited and up on there quickly. I've said this before, but Lightroom on the iPad is easily one of my favorite experiences. And finally, GoodNotes. I've not made it a secret that GoodNotes is my favorite way to experience note-taking on the iPad. I use this for all forms of note-taking, thumbnail sketching and enhanced PDF markups. And it is a paid app, but it's totally worth it for the feature set. And it's usually one of the first installs I do on a new iPad. I really love this thing. Obviously these apps have worked really well for me and my workflows, but it's really worth finding an app that makes your working life easier and more importantly, quicker. If you've shied away from paid apps in the past, and I totally get that, I would say that some of the best experiences on iPad are usually paid for ones. So they are worth checking out if you can swallow through that price. Lastly, this tip is more of a thought process than a specific iPad tip, but it's something I always say to people who are thinking about getting an iPad to do work-based things. With a piece of technology that's a specific design as an iPad, you should always lean into what it's really, really good at and stay away from things it's just not great for. Trust me, you can waste a serious amount of time trying to get the iPad to work for specific workflows, and before you know it, you'll probably just wish you bought a MacBook or if you were just sitting at your desktop machine. An example for myself is video editing. Yep, the iPad can do it and LumaFusion is great, but it's not good enough for me. So I don't try and kid myself it's worth getting into. I'll always jump back to the Mac Studio or my MacBook Pro if I'm going to be doing some serious video editing. And an example in the other direction is note taking. I love the iPad for getting ideas down, writing shot lists and sketching out thumbnail ideas. For me, there's no better form factor or computer to do this on and it makes total sense for all of that stuff to be on there, especially with the Apple Pencil. Also using an app like GoodNotes too means everything is already synced up to my Mac so I can just open up my iPad notes on there while I'm sitting back at my desk iPads can be really amazing tools, but they're not perfect for all tasks yet, and they might never be, so don't force it into something it's not, it's just not worth the headache. It's worth remembering too that iPad OS 16 is on the horizon, or by the time you're watching this, it might already be out, so there's going to be loads more features and loads more different ways to use your iPad to get more things done, especially with Stage Manager. As always though, I'd love to read about your tips for productivity or the features that you are loving on the iPad. So drop them in the comments below and share them with everybody else. Pop a like on the way out too, that'd be massive. And I will see you all in the next one.